excited about being here. I know I looked at the schedule this year and I said, my pastor has loaded up. He wasn't playing. And uh, you're in for a wonderful week. I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 1. And I hope you saved a little bit of your voice because you may need to use it here in a few minutes. <clears throat> Ooh, I believe this is going to be a special day. I do need to tell you that I'm just an old Pentecostal boy. I believe in shouting. At our babies, I don't even believe we've had church to all your clothes is stuck to you. We light it up and we do things very relevant and very current, but my core, core non-negotiables, I am full-blown Holy Ghost filled. Uh, last, last church I speak at, New Jer spoke at in New Jersey, spoke at a church of about 2,500 people and half the people in the building came down and got filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a community church. They didn't even know what that was. But they did after it was over. We had the pastor's eyes was that, about that big around. He said, what happened? I said, you'll figure it out after I fly. I'll fly home. But uh, I believe God wants to do something. And we have a generation where the church is almost split into two halves. It's a church that thinks they have to basically design everything for lost people. And then there's the other kind that thinks they got to design everything for church people. And the two are at odds. And I do believe that there is a hybrid. I do believe that there is a church that can grow the church person. But that is attractive to the soul that is in need. I believe one of my assignments in the earth is to portray that kind of church. And, uh, so we're going to have a great time. Genesis chapter 1. I'm just going to skip around. I think those who follow Pastor Parsley, you should be fairly familiar with your Bible. So I just want to skip around because I want to prove a point right here, and I'll preach from it later. I want to talk about the power of your shout. Thank you, Lord. Verse 4, and God saw the light that it was good. Verse 10, God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters. He called seas and God saw that it was good. Verse 12, the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind. Go to the end of the verse and God saw that it was good. Hmm. Verse 18, one to rule over the day, another to rule over the night and divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. Verse 21, God created the sea creatures. <clears throat> Go to the end of verse 21, and God saw that it was good. Verse 25, and God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind. Go to the end of the verse, and God saw that it was good. But verse 5 says, God called the light day and the darkness night, so the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Then God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Huh. Why did everything get a it was good and the firmament got a it was so? That's interesting. So everything God created because there was nobody there to praise him, he praised himself. He created it, then he stepped back and says, you're a bad God. So he created, then he'd praise what he just created because there was nobody there to bless him. But then he created this thing in the middle, an expanse called the firmament and he said it is so and kept right on moving there was one part of creation that never got God's blessing I want to know why I think I know Lord bless the reading of your word and everybody said amen in Jesus name touch your neighbor on both sides say here we go here we go here we go <laughs> mm. Ooh. 
Ooh, I got something for y'all. Y'all ready back here? I'm going to need you. I'm going to need you. <laughs> There's a difference between when you were created and when you were made. The word made means to take from what already exists and craft something else. You were made when your mother and father's union came and gave you a body. I'm not telling you nothing new. Just give me some time because I preach brick upon brick and I build a house. And when I get through, we build a whole house. Hallelujah. So I'm laying a foundation. To be made means to take out of what exists and craft something else. So you were made out of the dust of the earth at the coming together of your mother and father's union. God made you a house. Of course, you know this is not the real you. This is what the real you lives in during your assignment on earth. You do understand that once you've been born again, you're not even from earth. Your citizenship is in heaven. You have become an ambassador to earth. An ambassador does not represent his own opinions. When an ambassador is sent from one country to another, he represents the opinion of his government. So if your citizenship is in heaven and you are ambassador in the earth, you are not here to represent your own likenesses and opinions. You are here to represent heaven in every situation. I'm building a house. Just roll with me here. We're going to have some fun, I'm telling you. We're going to have some fun. So your mother and father made you a house, but the Bible says you were chosen or you were created in Christ from the foundations of the earth. There is very little said about your preexistence. But somehow or another, there is proof in the Bible that you at the very least existed in the mind of God. And in the mind of God, you were created in Christ Jesus. To create means to make out of nothing. So God made you out of nothing, and then there was an assignment given to you in the earth at which the real you would come in this house and we would live in this house. You know what something came from because when it dies, it goes back to it. If Pastor Parsley ever decides to get rid of these pews, what will happen? They will go back to wood. Why? Because that's what they came from. When your car is over and they crush it, it goes back to metal because metal is what it came from. When your body dies, it goes back to dust. Why? Because when it dies, it goes back to what it came from. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Why? Because when you die, you go back to where you came from. You did not come from your mama and your daddy. You came because you were created in Christ Jesus before the foundations of the earth were ever laid. This is just the house that you live in. You may have a tall house, a short house. You may have a fat house, a skinny house, a pretty house, an ugly house. My wife is a brick house. I don't know what kind of house you got, but everybody's got some kind of house to live in. Can you shout amen? You can still be holy and live, be married to a brick house. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you understand when God wants to create, okay, he speaks. God's word is his creative mechanism. And when God wants to create, this is a very important principle. Stay with me right here. I'm getting ready to, to, to preach in a minute. I'm shifting gears. When God wants something, he does not speak to the thing he wants. He speaks to the thing that holds it and commands the thing that holds it to let it go. God never said, let there be grass. He didn't say, let there be tomatoes. He didn't say, let there be cute. He said, let the earth bring forth its seed. In other words, all of those vegetables and fruits were the potential of the earth, and he told the earth to let go of what was already in it. So God did not speak to what he wanted. He speak to what held it and told it to let it go. God did not say, let there be striper and bass and catfish. 
he said, let the waters bring forth. So there were sea creatures already in the potential of the water, and God told the water to let go of what was already in it. And when he spoke to the water, it gave up its potential, and then all the sea creatures began to live. Are you following me? God didn't say let there be Judah, uh, Jupiter and Plato, uh, 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 Pluto and Saturn. God said let the heavens bring forth. In other words, inside the heavens were the potential for every star and every planet. And God told the heavens to let go of what was already in them. The Bible said let us make man in our own image. When God got ready to create man, God did not speak to the water. He did not speak to the sky. He did not speak to the earth. He went in the mirror and he looked into himself and he said, God, let what's in you go. And we are God's potential. You got to understand, mom and dad gave you a house, but you did not come from the Smiths or the Jacksons. You came from God Almighty in heaven. And I need somebody to wave their hand if you know this is not the real you, but the real you was created in heaven. This is just a bit of time that God gave you to do something in the earth. And I am going to live out my potential in this earth. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm not going to die till I'm finished. Tell them, I'm not going to die. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel something stirring already. I feel something stirring already. I'm just early in this message, but I wish somebody would take 10 seconds and just welcome the Holy Ghost. I feel a stirring of the Spirit. I feel a moving around in the heavens. I've been praying with God and there's something he wants to do today. Oh, shout hallelujah in this place. Shout hallelujah one more time. Oh. Uh, I ain't nowhere near that yet. Y'all got to give me a few minutes. I don't want to blow a gasket. Ooh, I feel something. I'm on an assignment. I didn't come to play around. I'm ready to get a group of people. Let's go occupy. Let's go occupy enemy hell territory. Let's occupy the heavens over our city. Let's occupy the neighborhoods that are torn down. Let's occupy the lost. Let's occupy the school system. Let's occupy the prison system. We've got a message and we've got to receive the power to go and deliver it. Shout hallelujah. Let me get going. I got a lot to say and I got a short time to get there. Mm. <laughs> Most people think the first thing that God created was the heavens and the earth. The first thing God created was not the heavens and the earth. The first thing he created was a sound. First thing was he said. The atmosphere must have never heard a sound before. Because at the sound that God made, everything began appearing out of nothing. So the first thing God did was he spoke and there was a sound that was created. And then the earth and everything in it began to respond to the sound of his voice. <clears throat> now, here are the principles that I want to lay down today. I travel a lot, probably too much. But there's a trend that I'm seeing amongst a new generation. I'm seeing churches that are just too quiet. That was deep, wasn't it? I don't have no Greek or Hebrew, just quiet. <laughs> I'm hearing music that is flatlined. It doesn't rise, it doesn't fall, it doesn't peak, it doesn't valley, it doesn't pull, it doesn't make a demand, it's just lazy. It's lazy. Now I go everywhere, I go in all type of atmospheres. Every significant power in the earth is accompanied by a significant sound. In other words, there is nothing in the earth that has power that does not have sound. <laughs> Used to work with chainsaws. 
chainsaw can take down the mighty oak tree. But the piercing of the sound made us have to wear earplugs. Because it had great power, but it had great sound. I lived with a railroad track not far behind my backyard. And about midnight, you could hear it two miles away. The thunder of those diesel engines and the rumbling of the track. And it could pull a set of cars a mile, a mile and a half long. Unbelievable power. But accompanied by an unbelievable sound. I am amazed that jet engines can take 600,000 pounds and move it 550 miles an hour in the air. But if you look at everybody working at an airport, what is covered? Their ears. Because everything powerful has a powerful sound. I have been in a gas station refrigerator when a tornado passed over. The tornado was following me down the interstate. I drove into a gas station and huddled down right beside the beer section. Yes, I did. Hallelujah. And the tornado came right over the top while we were in that freezer. And it has power to lift a house off its foundations. But what I had never been around was the sound that it made as that wind whirled in a circular motion. Everything that has great power is accompanied by a great sound. I think the reason we're not seeing much happening in our churches. is because we are no longer accompanied by a great sound in our churches. What have we done with our shout? What have we done with our amens? What have we done being so tired and sleepy sitting in our pews? What has happened to the people that are dancing in the aisles? Why are we turning the volume down? Everything that has great power has a great sound. And if we're going to be a powerful church, it's going to be because we have a church that like our God made in his image we are opening our mouth and releasing a sound into the atmosphere that pierces the forces of darkness that pierces powers rulers, principalities spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. I want to know am I at the right place or is Dominion Camp meeting the right place to find a group of people that are ready to release a sound in the atmosphere Oh, I'm going to give you 10 seconds seconds to take a deep breath and oh, somebody 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 crack the heavens open ran back the heavens and say I'm not ashamed to open my mouth and let out a praise that makes walls fall oh, I came to shout Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I bless your name. I want the world to hear me. I want Columbus to hear me. I want America to hear me. I'm going to open my mouth and bless the name of the Lord God of hosts. Shout amen. High five, three people say, that man's preaching now. That man's preaching. That man's preaching. I came to take something down. I came to lift something up. I came to cast something out. But yet I came to bring something in. I came to put something in you. But yet I came to pull something out of you. Who wants to go with me? Oh! I'm going to get some water. Tell two or three people, say, that's what I'm talking about. Those that. God inhabits my praises. God inhabits my praises. You are in charge of how big your God is. You are in charge of how big your God is. If you want a little God, then you give him a, that little puny praise. But some of us want a great big God and I got to give him a great big place to live in. I wish somebody back in the balcony would shout so I could hear you all the way in the front. I'm ready to make a big sound because I need a big God.
because I'm fighting some big battles and I got some big needs and I'm fighting some big devils. I ain't got time for that little praise God. I need a bit. I need a I need a bit. Oh, I need a bit praise God. Good God, I feel like somebody needs 30 seconds. Get it out of your system. Just get it out. Just get it out of here. Just get it out of here. I was going to wait till the end, but somebody needs to get rid of it right now. You got a problem and you need a big God. Get him into your atmosphere. Praise him into your midst. Get him into your presence. Oh! Woo! Run, brother, run. Run. Run, brother, run. Run. Hallelujah. I feel the turning of the Holy Ghost. I feel the whirling of a wheel inside me. I feel God wants to do something in you that hasn't been done in a long time. There is a God that wants to crush discouragement and depression and defeat. And when you walk out of here, let you walk out with a sword in your hand and victory in your mouth. Somebody, I'm going to give you 15 more seconds to bless the name of the Lord your God. Come on and praise him. Oh. 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 Hey. I got a lot more to go. You got to give me. Somebody tell the neighbor, say, let the man finish. Let the man finish. Let the man. Now sit down. Now sit down. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm at the right place. Yeah, I'm at the right place. By the way, this is Dominion Camp Meeting, not Defeated Camp Meeting. This is. Do trying but y'all making it hard <laughs> I really got something I want to say I knew God was going to do something I knew it I felt it I need you to hear me out and save a little bit of gas. I got to get this message out of me. If I don't, I'm on bus. Hallelujah. 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 Hang with me, hang with me, hang with me. Sound precedes manifestation. 
too many times we wait for something to manifest and then we make a sound. But sound was never meant in the biblical sense to follow an act of God. It was meant to create and cause an act of God. You hear the sound of the jet long before you see it. I heard the sound of the train long before I saw it. I heard the sound of the tornado long before I saw it. Jehoshaphat, God, what are we going to do? Throw down your weapons and make a sound. <laughs> and then God threw the enemy into confusion. I don't know who I'm talking to in this place, but some of you are one sound away for something powerful happening. What are we going to do with Jericho? You're going to make a sound. And on the heels of your sound, I will cause the walls to fall. Elijah, I hear the sound. Oh, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I don't see nothing. I don't care. Go back. I hear a sound. I'm talking to some people that you haven't seen anything with your eyes, but does anybody hear a sound on the inside of you that lets you know it is about to rain on the inside of your life? I don't care if you see it or not. You ain't got to see it. All you got to do is hear it. Somebody shout amen. In the upper room, there came a sound from heaven. Then, tongues of fire. The sound creates the move. We want God to move and then we respond with a sound and we've gotten it backwards. I don't see God doing anything in my city. You're gonna have to make a sound. And by the way, Everything in life follows the direction of the sound it makes. If you don't like the direction of something, change the sound. I can create whatever mood I want to in my house if I put the sound to it. The sound creates the mood. Hallelujah. If you don't like what you're seeing in your church and where you're headed, can I tell you the first change you need to make? You need to change the sound. If I know something's lacking in a service, I will go take the microphone and I will shift. What do I shift? The sound. And when you shift the sound, God moves on the back of the sound that you moved. Let me tell you, those of you that are praise and worship leaders, what I am seeing through the prophetic eye. I'm seeing that we have a lot of praise and worship leaders that know the sound of the age, but do not know the sound of a moment. <laughs> and though you have the sound of your generation, you just miss 20 moments in God because you didn't recognize what God wanted to do in that moment. Sometime God wants to lead you beside still waters and restore your soul. Give me, some, give me something strange. Just, he wants to, yeah, I'm gonna let you change over. When you, when you get there, I, just, I wanna illustrate this point right here. Y'all sit back down, relax, y'all so uptight. <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna go this way. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> he leads me beside still waters. Oh yeah. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why do you think David said he had to have skilled musicians? <laughs> a skilled musician is not a talent level. A skilled musician is knowing what God wants to do and giving him a sound to ride on. 
Now watch this right here. Brother Drummer, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Give me something tribal. I came in here with the army of God to march into the enemy's camp and begin to take back what the enemy has stolen from me. Jesus said, occupy till I come and I will not stop till I've occupied every financial promise and I've occupied every healing promise and I've occupied every deliverance promise until peace is mine and joy is mine in the Holy Ghost and I'm ready for men and women who are ready to engage in battle. This means war. Somebody shout war. You see how quickly that moved? What moved it? God moved on the back of a sound. Why? Because God wanted to create anything. He started it with a Any atmosphere, any revival, any move you want to create, it will begin with the sound that you make. It will begin. You don't like what's happening in your marriage? Change the sound in your house. <laughs> you don't like what's happening in your kids? Change the sound they're listening to. Everything begins with a sound. Every manifestation is on the hinge of a sound. Let me prove something else to you right here. Y'all sit back down for just a minute. I, I got about 10 minutes. I got to make best of it. Some of you say, what does this have to do with Genesis 1? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Sound predicts destiny. <laughs> okay? <laughs> if you turned on your TV and you saw you were watching something on TV and it was a woman, middle-aged, in a blue dress, walking down the sidewalk. Okay? And you hear this music. She's going to a party. She's going to somebody's house she likes. She's going out on a date. You can take that same picture, same woman, same dress, same sidewalk. And you sitting there slumbering down in your seat because you know Jason about to come out from behind a tree, hit that Achilles tendon, that leg don't go to flapping like this. What does Hollywood even know that the church ain't got yet? You knew nothing about her destiny by what you saw. You only knew about her destiny by what you heard. That's why you don't need to be looking at your brother and sister and thinking that's all there is. Because you don't know the sound that they're making when not, not around you. What you see right now does not define where... What you see does not define where I'm going. I'm making a sound when you're not with me. I'm walking around my house barefooted praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm walking around my sanctuary at the midnight hour. You don't hear what's coming out of my mouth. You don't hear what I'm speaking into the atmosphere. If you look at where I am, you're going to miss me. But if you listen to the way I talk, you can get a hold of my tomorrow. I'm going to give you 20 more seconds. Make one blessed sound for your destiny and throw it out into the atmosphere. Yes, 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 Lord, yes, oh. hallelujah, five, four, three, two, one, shout hallelujah in this place. 
Tell your neighbor, say, I ain't through making sounds yet. Tell them, sit back down, sit back down, sit back down. Whoo, shit, I back here, taller than that. Shit, I back here, taller than So Genesis 1, God said there is a firmament. The firmament was the only part of creation that never got God's blessing. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. It's so, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Satan is not in hell. I just ruined half of y'all's theology. <laughs> All the demons in hell. That's good preaching, but they're not in hell. It makes people shout, but it's a lie. In fact, the Bible says spiritual wickedness is in heavenly places. The Bible says, Revelation 19 and 20, hell is reserved. The devil is not in hell and demons are not in hell. <laughs> when Satan and the third of those that were to abide with him were cast out of heaven, a space had to be created. Because they were not flesh, they could not inhabit the earth. And because of their rebellion, they could not be in the presence of God. So God, ahead of time, created an expanse. The word firmament in the Old Testament, Genesis, is parallel to the word air in Ephesians 2. He is the prince of the power of the air. God created a housing space for evil and refused to bless it. <laughs> he refused to bless it because he knew who and what would reside there. <laughs> now there is a dilemma. Because <laughs> the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. He said, I want you to pray like this. Pray that what's in heaven would be on earth. The Bible lets us know there are three heavens. There is the earth's atmosphere, which starts 12 inches above your head. There is a third heaven, which John was taken to and got the revelation. Revelation is not a book. Revelation was a picture. He came down and wrote a picture, and it turned into a book. But revelation was a vision. God took him into the third heaven, the abode of God, and he saw a vision, and he wrote it down. But then there is a second realm, an expanse, called the realm of the firmament. It is the abode of all evil and all spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And God is telling me that for his kingdom to come in the earth, that I am somehow responsible to get what's in number three in the number one. The dilemma is it's got to pass through number two. Now let me push the envelope further because I love to do it. <laughs> you don't have any needs. Any. When Jesus said it is finished, he went and sat down. And you're not going to get him up. Because he's done. And you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. <laughs> According to the word of God, you have no needs. You have been totally and completely provided for. Your vision has been provided for. 
Everything you will ever need to accomplish your purpose has already been provided for. But it's in another dimension. Faith is not what I use to create something that does not exist. It's what I use to move something from spirit to natural. <laughs> Roll with me now. And so I realized that somehow or another, everything that I, that I need has already been provided for me. But it's not in a dimension where I can use it. I cannot go to the utility place with a $300 utility bill on my house and say, you know what, I don't have it right now, but I got some spiritual blessings in heavenly places if you just hold out a little while. <laughs> you send in rent or you paying for a house, you can't quote scripture. It better be in your hand because that's the only way you can use it. Now, just as there are three heavens, I noticed there are three dimensions to a praise. So there's a praise that must pierce all three heavens. Man, I wish I had time to bring it up. The Bible says that there is a praise that silences the enemy. I believe the level of praise is not an expression. I believe it's an intensity. There is a level of intensity that I can put into a praise that will silence the enemy. That it can pierce the realm of my immediate atmosphere and change it and bring me a peaceful one if I will give God that praise. The Bible says there's a second level of praise. It says it steals the enemy. So now I have gone to a next level praise that has not only silenced him, but has rendered, rendered him ineffective. Okay, But then the Bible says that there's a shout. He knows it. <laughs> the word shout, catch this, means to mar, destroy, and tear apart piece by piece. Now if I understand what tear apart and destroy means, there is an intensity of praise that can actually lessen the number against me. I have gone past making him shut up. I have gone past rendering him ineffective. I have actually gone into a place where I can reduce the number that is aligned against me. <laughs> I believe there is now no secret to why churches have gotten so quiet. And while we are building the biggest churches in America in history, our culture is going to hell. So just because we can pack people in a building does not mean we are impacting the world that we live in. Because our culture is in decline every day and we're filling up buildings every day. Something is not right. So that means though we have people in a building, the enemy is still having his way in our culture and in our atmosphere. Who I'm preaching. <laughs> so Jesus said these words. He said, whatever you bind on earth, I'm gonna do the same in heaven. He said, but whatever you loose, he said, I'm going to respond in heaven. In other words, God says, if you remain quiet, heaven will remain closed. <laughs> when you release your sound, heaven will release your promises. This is the assignment I'm on, and I got seven minutes to finish it, and we're going to bless the Lord, and I'm going to turn it over to whoever's next. I'm very specific on this assignment. Nobody in here is hurting because they can't preach, they can't love, they can't minister, and they can't do music. 
But if I pass this mic, everybody in this building would talk about lack of resources. Everybody. If you say you got everything you need to do, everything you want, you're lying to me. <laughs> or either you have a very small vision. <laughs> I can tell you right now, I have not even begun, and I turn 49 next week. I, don't, I ain't even begun. I ain't even got crunked up good yet. <laughs> and I don't lack for vision. I don't lack for manpower. And I don't lack for a volunteer army. There's one thing holding Ron Carpenter back. Resources. My frustration is God says I've already given you all of them. But they're not in a dimension where they are usable to me. Daniel prayed. Three weeks later, the angel showed up. Daniel's frustrated. Listen to the angel. It proves my point. Oh, I left with your answer when you prayed. The moment you asked, I was dispatched. What does Mark 11, 22 through 24? When you pray, believe you have received. Not when you receive, believe you have received. When you pray, believe you have received. Why? Because the moment you ask, God dispatches. God is not playing keep away from us. So something is wrong. If I pray, God already has it. He releases it. And I'm supposed to believe it's mine the moment I ask then why is it not in my hand? He said, I would have been here, but I had to wrestle when I left number three. I had to wrestle in number two. And finally, God had to, dis had to dispatch help to come and aid me, to cut me loose so I could make it to you. I want you to understand there is tremendous conflict, not over your prayer. We've missed it. There's tremendous conflict over your answer. <laughs> and the revelation that God brought me into this house with today is God answered you when you asked. I believe there are untold thousands of answered prayers that are held up in the second realm. And if there is the right sound released in this house, wait, stay with me, we're about to explode, we're about to explode, stay with me. If we release the right sound, I know we're tired, I know about camp meetings, I know about preaching every day, I know about six hour services, I know all about it. But there is a sound. I'm serious. This is not a church gimmick. I've laid this thing out for you. And if that sound is released, what if 10, 12, 15 years of answer prayer was released in your life in a day? <laughs> what if every prayer you pray God, what if every building you need, what if every person you need, what if every leader you need, what if every resource you need, God answered the prayer the moment you prayed, but your enemy has been going around in the second heaven with his pockets open, catching your blessings. I'm telling you something. God answered your prayer, but the enemy has held up your stuff. I'm about ready for a radical five minutes. I got five minutes. I got five minutes. I need something to begin whirling. I don't care if we got music or not. You are the music. I need something to begin whirling on the inside of you. If you don't believe what I'm saying, you can sit down. But there's some other us, others of us that we believe that the enemy has stolen some stuff. And I refuse to leave this building. Here's what I want you to do. We're not going to try to be pretty. For those of you that are angry about it, you're mad about it, and you know you've been waiting too long, and something inside of you said something ain't right. I want you to get in the aisles. I want you to get you some free space. I want you to walk around. 
Forget who you're beside. Forget who you're in front of. Forget who you're behind. I need somebody to get crazy and begin to release a sound and blessings are about to go out of the hand of your enemy. On the count of three, one, good God Almighty, two, Shepato Sadabaka, three, do what you gotta do to make him let it go. Go, go, go.
I hear the Lord saying, there's a release in the heavens today. There's a release in your house today. There's a release in your city today. For your shout has pierced the heavens. The heavens have opened up, saith the Lord God Almighty. He's coming home, mama. He's coming home. I'm just telling you, he's coming home. You've been praying for him. He's coming home. He's miserable. God has gotten him. Your shout has pierced through. Your prayer has been answered. He is come. Somebody needed to hear that. Your son is coming home. Some of you, your blessings are going to be waiting on you when you get back. They have been released and they're going to hit you in the face when you get back to your city. They're going to greet you when you hit the airport. You're going to get a call today saying that your prayers have been answered. Oh, that my people of God would praise him. good God. 